time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready, we're about to pump you up. Live from the greatest city in the world, this is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning, this is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and happens to be my father, Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. What's shaking on this? I guess really the last weekend of uh, March. We're almost, I mean, we're, we're in spring. Spring's official this past week. Spring's official, Rye, and I'm, I'm mad with March Madness, and your wild cats are They're looking in the hot. hunt. They're in the hunt. They're in the game, Bob. Well, no, uh, repeat, repeat. I'll re- I predict a repeat. <laughs> we'll see. They're not as good as last year, but uh, my hopes are high. Well, you know what makes me happiest about Villanova, right? I didn't have to pay anybody to get you into the university like they did in this uh, tuition scandal. So that's a good news. <laughs> it's shocking you didn't. I'm surprised they just let me in on my own merit. So we'll never figure well, that out. I still one. had to pay the tuition, buddy. So that's. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate that, Dad, all these years uh, later. <laughs> well, all right, Wildcat, great... what do you got for us today? Well, we've got a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about income planning mistakes. Generating consistent cash flow is one of the most critical components of your retirement. We're going to break down what mistakes to avoid when building a lifetime of income you cannot outlive. We're going to talk about getting real about your retirement. Are you being realistic about what to expect in retirement? Bob and I are going to give you a reality check to make sure you have all your bases covered, along with this week's financial propaganda, where we're going to call it the worst advice the financial media has been recently broadcasting. And we have our spotlight segment today. We have our financial advisor, Aaron Dessen, with us this morning. He's going to break down and review someone's real retirement plan for you. So let's hop to it. So Bob, generating cash flow might be the single most important component to building a solid retirement plan. So let's discuss some of those crucial mistakes you really need to avoid when you're constructing your income plan for retirement. And the first one's kind of obvious. We don't want to just be reliant on Social Security. That's not going to cut it. No, absolutely not, Ryan. I met uh, the other day with uh, dear friends of mine who have also been clients for 44 years. And they're fortunate in that they get Social Security, but they also both get pensions. Yes. I mean, that's... And then you get a pension as well, Bob, which let's, let's face it, it's very rare for anyone of our clients or anyone who's walking to our office that has a pension above and beyond their Social Security. I mean, you just see less and less of those. So it's very nice, right? A lot of baby boomers do have pensions, but pensions and Social Security are not enough. But you know what? My client said to me something that was music to my ears, right? They said, music we need income. Yes. And you know what? That's what everyone should be saying when it comes to retirement. <laughs> Whether you're getting close to retirement a couple years out or retired now, the question becomes, okay, you know you're going to get your Social Security, and we can help you figure out all the different ways to do that because you have to figure out when's the right time to take Social Security. But above and beyond that, the question is, how do I draw from my portfolio so that I can keep my lifestyle intact? And more importantly, Bob, how can I do it consistently for the rest of my life? And that's the problem with the financial media, right? They think the whole idea of a, of a portfolio is buy low, sell high. You're up, you're down. You're in, you know, you're making money, you're losing money. That's the only part of it. The, the, the whole idea of having a portfolio is to generate that necessary income, dependable, repeatable income that you need once you're no longer collecting a paycheck. Exactly right. And that's the thing. Irrespective if the market goes up or goes down, your retirement plan should be contingent upon that. If you build a portfolio correctly, you should be able to create enough current income off of your portfolio that you can live on. So you're not touching your principal. And that has nothing to do whether the market's up or down, Bob. If you set your portfolio up right, it should be consistently bringing income in that you can live on. And it's funny. I I talked to a guy the other day. He has all his money in real estate. And all I could say is I'm so scared of the stock market. (laughs) Oh, that's great, right? So it's um, he's afraid of the stock market, but he's not afraid of the real estate market. I, I say, pick your poison. Well, you know, the thing is, they're not that dissimilar. Um, I said, look, I mean, it's not a lot of different than what you're doing with your properties. You're generating income. You get rental income every month. You live yep. on that or you reinvest it back in your properties. And then later on, you're hoping your properties are worth more. So the stock market works the same way. We're collecting dividends or rental income on our stocks. 
and we hope sometime in the future they're worth more. It's it's the same thing. The only difference is his real estate properties aren't traded every second of the day, so he knows the price of them every second of the day. That's what changes the dynamics. And it's not just that, right? It's not only the liquidity, not being able to get money when you need it, but you know, dividends and interest are something that are paid on a consistent basis, and they go up over time. You know, I know when I own a, a high quality portfolio of financial assets from the best companies in the world, that check's going to clear. What happens when they collect a check from your renter and it bounces? You got to go out and chase your tenants, and that's no fun, especially in retirement, Bob. <laughs> Not at all. Not <laughs> at get all. your so, bad out in Yeah, your- they are similar, <laughs> but they're very different. But I think it's that the key is having the correct portfolio, as you say, and, and it starts with bonds, right? I think bonds are really misunderstood. A lot of people are sitting with those evil, you know, horrible bond funds. And they don't know how horrible they are, and they won't find out until rates start going up. Well, yeah, and that's another thing, because you can say to yourself, well, I need income, so I'm just going to buy a bond portfolio. And the problem with that, Bob, is if you own a bond portfolio, they pay the same amount of interest every single year. And why that's a problem is because of inflation, right? Oh, you yeah. know, It's not only do you need an income plan for today, but you need an income plan for the rest of your life. Like, For example, Bob, if I need $5,000 today to live on in retirement, I'm going to need $9,000 in 20 years to do the same thing. And if you're getting the same amount of income in today, that's not going to cut it 10 years from now, 20 years from now. I know. And I think the message coming from the media is, again, is misleading because they're telling us that the Federal Reserve put interest rates on hold because they have inflation under control. Well, under control means it's growing slowly. It's only going up 2% a year. 2% a year is still you know, inflation. It still compounds against you. It means everything's going to cost more, right? No matter what happens. Now, what happens if inflation goes back up to historically normal three or 4%, then you really have a problem. Yeah. So that's why not only do you need income coming in, but you need what we call an increasing cash flow investment. And that's where you can't just have your money in annuities because annuities, once you turn on your income stream, pay the same thing every year. If you have a bond portfolio, it pays the same thing every year. But that's where stocks like real estate not only do you get your rental income, but that rental income goes up over time. You know, you increase the rents. Well, dividends go up over time as well. And that's one of those critical components you need in your portfolio. You need cash flow that's going to go up over time because your expenses are going to go up too, just to keep up with the cost of living. It's a huge point. Right. That's a great point. And you're so right. Income is the cornerstone of any successful financial plan. And so many of you are failing to take that into consideration with your own written plan. As a matter of fact, most of you don't plan to fail. You simply fail to plan. Now, yeah. Rye, would be as good as time as any to start that step on becoming financially independent. Yes. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need to get an income plan for retirement. I need to figure out how I'm going to draw from my portfolio. Here's a shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Myself and Bob will run for you our total financial master plan, and we're going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review when we look at the whole picture. All you need to do is print those statements off the computer, put them in a folder, bring them in the office. We're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal where we can take a bird's eye view of your entire financial life, and we're going to look at all the critical components. We're going to look at everything from fees, Yes, there's a lot of hidden costs in your investment portfolio and those annuities, mutual funds, brokerage products. We're going to show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. We're going to look at income. Income is so critical. Have you put together an income plan for retirement? What's your income gap going to look like? We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio so you create a stream of income that you cannot live in retirement. And we're going to look at diversification. Did your portfolio get hit really hard at the end of last year? Is your portfolio protected? We're going to show you how to protect or bulletproof your portfolio for retirement. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, utilizing strategies now our family has worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. And all you have to do is call or text 844 844- 752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of our next 10 callers and you've saved over 200000 for your retirement, our team will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost, but there won't be a plan unless you text or call. 
844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob Payne, and I'm with my son, Bry Payne. And we're the Paynes. No pain, no gain. Financial Radio. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning. This is Bob Payne, Chief Investment Strategist here at Payne Capital Management. And in a world filled with uncertainties, the Federal Reserve gave us one less thing to worry about this week. To no one's surprise, the Fed kept interest rates unchanged, but came across as more dovish than most were expecting. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell indicated that they are unlikely to raise rates again this year and may be nearly finished with the series of increases they began more than three years ago. In response, stocks climbed briefly to their highest levels for the year, and the bond market rallied higher across all maturities. The benchmark 10-year Treasury bond yield declined to 2.5%, a new low for the year, and a big positive for the housing market since mortgage rates loosely follow the 10-year yield, and mortgage rates fell sharply this week to their lowest level in 52 weeks. In sum, the Fed's main aim appears to be to do no harm to the economy that Chairman Powell observed was in a, quote, good place, unquote, while inflation continues to run below its 2% target and in the absence of a sharp economic slowdown, which the Fed doesn't see in the cards. Their forecast for gross domestic product growth was trimmed at 2.1% down from 2.3%, while it's predicting growth of 1.9% in 2020. The Federal Reserve Chairman's recent actions are reminiscent of a previous chairman, Alan Greenspan, whose actions during his reign in the 90s were popularly known as the Greenspan put, leading investors to believe that whenever storm clouds appeared in the economy, the Fed would come to their rescue with loose monetary policy. Do we now have a pal put? Well, only time will tell. Meanwhile, there's a world of worry out there from trade and tariffs, China's slowdown, weakness in Europe, and Brexit. However, with modest growth, low inflation, the Fed can keep rates low and take one big worry off our list. Now, if you're sitting there wondering, do I have to keep worrying? Do I know if I'm going to achieve my goals? Am I going to achieve my dreams with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as only a fiduciary can provide? Why sit there and worry when you could know? Give us a call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Time for some New York City trivia. Did you know pinball was once banned in the city? It was in place until 1978. Speaking of pinballs, if you're tired of watching your accounts bounce all over the place, you should keep listening to No Pain, No Gain. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. Bob and I... We're simple men, so we like to keep it simple for you. We want to give you the most common sense advice that you can apply to your planning and investing. And that's why we put together our latest guide, highlights from the new tax law, just to get you up to speed on the new tax reform. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish, to 555-888 highlights from the new tax law just to get you up to speed on the new tax reform. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. So Bob, we found it's important to expect the unexpected when you're finally retired. So I thought we'd give our listeners a reality check when it comes to understanding what to anticipate in retirement and I think the first one is just managing your expectations is huge. You know, Ryan, when you're talking about expectations, it reminds me of Steve Jobs, who had that reality distortion field. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, you know, he had this, you know, if what didn't fit his view, he would just change it. Sometimes that happens. You're in denial about what your true expectations can be. You think that your income uh, can be sustained. You're not thinking about planning. You're not saving. So your expectations need to be managed and it should be managed in writing. Yeah, I think it's a problem too. I mean, you turn on all these financial shows and they have commercials that these financial companies come out with, or it's people like on a beach, 
they're hanging out, drinking cocktails all day. And, you know, like you're thinking, wow, man, this retirement thing's amazing. You know, you just turn on your, your stream of income and you're in good shape. But the reality of it is, you know, you have no idea what you can spend or can't spend unless you really sit down and you start to run the numbers. And the first place to do that is to start looking at what your expenses really are, right? Yeah, you can't ballpark these things, right? You really have to sit down, put pencil to paper and and add it up. And it's, you know, when you use our 360 financial portal, it's all done for you. So, which is nice because let's face it, budgeting is like dieting. Who wants to do it? Exactly right, Bob. It's uh, coming to see us is like going to a financial trainer. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's definitely about getting financially in shape. The other thing too is, we talked about this in, in the last segment, is you have to account for changes. Like we talked about inflation. So it's not about just meeting mm-hmm. your, your needs today, but all through retirement. A lot of things do change. You know, For instance, if you're going to retire soon, Maybe you're not 65 yet. You've got to cover your own health insurance. Maybe you had a company yeah, car be. before. So you have to start looking at well, all these things that are actually going to change. Yeah, you know, right. And, and what happens over time is that your home deteriorates. So you, you got to think about what, what happens if I have to put on a new roof or my air conditioner goes or what's my landscaping bill is going to be going forward. And last I checked, the municipalities all like to increase taxes. So you're going to have all these expenses that you need to account for and you can't sit there and, and expect to know that just by adding up what your current expenses are. You need a projection. You need to do a wealth projection uh, or have it done for you so you know that your portfolio is keeping pace with your expected expenses. Yeah. So a lot of times you may have to take less now so that you're protected later. So just because your income meets your expenses right now, well, what you have to account for, and we talk about this a lot, and we do this in all of our planning meetings, we say, well, what if you're 66, and then all of a sudden at age 75, you start having health expenses that go up, your medical costs that go up. And we've estimated it's like $260,000 you can expect to pay in medical costs after age 66. If you took that chunk out of your portfolio, and we model this out, Bob, that could have a huge impact on your lifestyle. So, and that also can impact what you can take right now, anticipating expenses like that in the future. Right. You couldn't be more correct. Every one of you need to run these what if scenarios. Why sit at home at night, not being able to sleep, not knowing, right? Not knowing what your future expectations are going to be in terms of, you know, income streams and what your expenses are. Want to have a written plan that actually graphs out exactly what your financial future looks like. Every single meeting we've had in the last year, every one of you have said to us, wow, this is great. I can finally sleep soundly at night knowing that I'm set for life. Why wouldn't you want that, Rye? Hey, I mean, Bob, you're, pe- you're preaching to the choir over here. Uh, and another thing, too, I think it'd be very dangerous when you're trying to give yourself a reality check here is you can't extrapolate out what your most recent experience has been in your portfolio. You know, a perfect example of that is we've been in a 10-year bull market. The market's going up for 10 years now, and it's done really, really well, especially if you've owned U.S. stocks in particular. But you have to project out, and we try to do this using conservative returns. You don't want to be overly optimistic with the returns that you expect on your portfolio because like December is a perfect example of that, Bob. Mm. Things can change on a dime, and that can have a detrimental effect on your retirement. Hey, Rye, that's a great point. We all tend to predict the future based on our most recent experience. And when the market's going up, we expect it to keep going up. Interest rates are going down. We expect it to keep going down. But it really isn't about that. It's about managing your expectations, as you said. And what you want to do is be very conservative in your predictions of what happens going forward. You know, have the worst case scenario, because when you plan for the worst case, guess what happens? Surprise are in the the positive. Yes. (laughs) No, I mean, that's the key. And I think that's important too. If you have a financial advisor and they are running your projections, you want to ask them what rate of return are they using on your money? Because if it's an over-optimistic number that they're using, you could be sorely disappointed. Bob, and I remember back when I used to intern for you in the summertime, it was probably like the late 90s when the market was really hot. And I remember they used to use projections back then that your portfolio was going to do like 9% a year, <laughs> which was completely, uh, you know, it was completely ridiculous. Hey, Ryan, that's, that's, that's so true. You're bringing back some uh, extraordinary memories. And it wasn't just the wirehouses or the banks that were making these projections, the insurance companies. I, I saw some insurance proposals 
where they assumed you would make 13 to 14 percent a year because that's <laughs> what the Nasdaq returned, right? And they had these unrealistic expectations, not only of what the returns would be, but how they would behave. You know, suddenly, oh well, I can handle being 100 percent in equities in stocks, and hey, why not? Why not do it on margin? You know, I can handle the market goes down, I'll be fine. Well. We know right. what happens when the market goes down, right? Everybody, everybody's head explodes. Yeah, anyway, I remember too because I, I actually became a financial advisor in the early two thousands, and a lot of those insurance policies, those whole life policies, blew up because people were saying, "Wait a second, it was supposed to perform at a ten percent rate, but it, you know, it ended up performing really poorly because the market, the tech bubble burst." So all of a sudden, people found out that they had to put all this new money into these insurance policies they thought were fully funded. It became a big disaster. So we don't want that to happen to you with your retirement. Hey, Ra, you know, I've always been accused of being an optimist, and so have you. And it's okay to be optimistic, but you got to be realistic. And if you're thinking to yourself, you know, I need to be financially healthy. I need to know that the projections in my financial plan are accurate, they're appropriate, they're realistic. You know, I need to know if I'm being overcharged by my own portfolio. I need to know if I'm in a position to succeed. Well, here's your opportunity. All you have to do is be one of our next few callers and have saved at least 200000 for retirement. It's a full holistic review where we look at everything. It's the only review you'll ever need. We're going to have you gather all your statements, put it in a folder, put it in a shopping bag, and we're going to review everything with you and build your own personalized 360 financial portal, which will allow you to become financially organized and view your complete financial life in real time at your convenience. We're also going to take your portfolio and break it down into three simple key elements of success, diversification, cost, and income. You want to be fully diversified, especially in these volatile markets. We want to be certain that you're not being penalized by the hidden costs. We don't want to take those excess fees that your advisor is charging out of their pocket and put it in your pocket where it belongs. And we also want to create a dependable, repeatable, reliable income stream to fill that gap that we all have in retirement. And if you're in retirement, we want you to achieve that ultimate goal, stay retired. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan where we answer that age old question, are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 40 years. That's right, for four decades. We've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B to your goals, to your dreams, with the least amount of risk and only the certainty that a fiduciary like Payne Capital Management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Nine two. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run for you our total financial master plan at no cost. Just call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is your shot. Make sure you're on track at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no game, Financial Radio. It's time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where we scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So, Bob, what did you find out there this week in the profane world of financial propaganda? You know, Ryan, I love this segment because it always reminds me that Wall Street is full of average, ordinary people who, for some reason, believe they can do and predict extraordinary things. Like you always say, uh, Wall Street is ordinary people trying to do extraordinary things. <laughs> and we I love had, that. Without a doubt. And we had two experts this week. They came out and they were crowing about the fact that they predicted the decline last quarter and the big decline in December. And they're saying, wow, I called this route in 2018 and I don't think things are much better. Meanwhile, we're having one of the best years we've ever had in the stock market. So why do they think this is good advice? And how does that help you as an investor 
when somebody told you to get out of the market last quarter and you just missed one of the best quarters in history. Well, I think you know it goes back to I wrote a, a little piece this last week and I said I, I trust my astrologist more than an economist. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you, know, you think right? You think economists and strategists exist to make astrologers look good? Is that what you're telling me? I think your odds are probably better. So yeah, I'd rather mm. go to my fortune teller to predict the future, and it's true. Because you know what happens, Bob, and we find this in our industry all the time, is the forecasts tend to always be wrong. <laughs> and yes. I think the one thing, the theme this year so far is, you know, the forecasters have said that the economy is in a slowdown mode. Mm -hmm. We may go into a recession. In fact, they're already predicting a 50% chance of a recession next year and a 75% chance in the year 2021. First off, I don't know anybody can predict out that far. But the point is, when you have everyone forecasting the same thing, they're typically wrong. No, it's so true, Ryan. I was watching CNBC this week, solely because you were on. I wanted to okay. see you. But you know, afterwards, they had on uh, the king of the bond market, uh, Mr. Gunlock, and he says, we're still in a bear market. Now, I'm looking at my small company stocks up 20%, my S&P 500 and tech stocks up 15%, my emerging market stocks up 20, you know, 15%. How's that a bear market? No, I know. It's crazy. And everyone's sitting there waiting for the next shoe to drop because statistically what's even more fascinating is the market's up over 10% this year, if we're talking about the US markets, yet $30 billion came out of US stock funds. So you know the public's been selling stock as the market's going up. And to me, that sounds very counterintuitive, Bob. Why would you sell out when things are going up? <laughs> well, it's the same no thing, sense. right? It's been going on for the last 10 years. The uh, average investor has been net liquidators of their equity and stock portfolios. And so what it does is it, it destroys your financial plan because you need those investments to hedge against inflation. You can't collect the dividend. And that's one thing that I think financial propaganda really harms us all as investors because it makes you think you can time the market or makes a difference where it's all about time in the market. It's about collecting your dividends, collecting your interest. And when you have a diversified portfolio, right, don't you make money every single day? Dividends and interest. And that, that's a good point because I had a lot of people tell me, and you may have been at cocktail parties and heard the same thing. Back when the market sold off in December, I heard a lot of people tell me, well, I got out of the market two months ago. And I'm thinking, mm. oh, you're so smart. But let's look at re what really happened. Let's say you did get out of the market before it went down. Number one, you sold and you had to pay taxes on your investments because once you sell and you realize your gains, guess what? Uncle Sam wants their piece. Number mm -hmm. two, Bob, you didn't collect those dividends that would have paid out in January. You missed that dividend payment you would have received and you're going to get another one in April. And guess what? The market's only about 2 3% away from that all-time high. So what was the good of getting out of the market? You just paid more in taxes and you just missed an income payment. It makes no sense. That reminds me, Rye, that uh, you know I have four favorite weeks every year, and one of them's coming up this week. What is it, Bob? <laughs> I don't know. It's the week oh, I dividend. get all my dividends. All our dividends are paid in our portfolio the last week of every quarter. And boy, I've got a lot of cash coming into my account this week, and I'm a happy man. You're a happy man. Bob, I like when you're a happy man. <laughs> it makes me happy. The other thing, too, a lot of the financial propaganda that I've seen this week uh, are around the fact that if you've been watching the financial news, is interest rates have been coming down. And the reason they're coming mm -hmm. down is because the economy has slowed down a little bit. And you're hearing, oh, that's, that's a sign that things are bad and that's the end. But the reality of it is, Bob, is the fact that rates are staying low is very good for the economy, and no one's talking about that, which is crazy. No, it's, it's really, it's a stimulus. I mean, when you think about, you have the 10-year Treasury bonds down uh, around 2.5%, which means mortgage rates are down. So housing just became more affordable. You have companies can borrow low. They can, you know, redeploy that money back into their company. can buy their own stock, right? They have a good risk arbitrage. You know, you borrow at a low rate, invest in your stock at a higher dividend rate. There's no risk. Yeah, no, exactly right. It's kind of the same thing when you when you get a mortgage that's at a low interest rate, and then you go and invest your money at a higher rate. You have that, what you call spread, which is another reason too, Bob, why right now, if you're sitting in cash, now rates are going lower. That means your money market is actually coming down in terms of the rate that you've been receiving. So another reason why you need to get your money invested, you can't just sit in, in cash because anytime rates are low like they've been, we say cash is trash. And right now that's, that's more true than ever. It's another reason why you really have to get your money invested for the long term because cash just doesn't pay. And with rates going down, it's paying less and less. Yeah, right. A great question from a, a good client of mine the other day. 
And he said, well, you know, these people that predicted we were going to be in a recession in 2019, they just came on last week and said, no, no, I meant 2020. And now they're going, <laughs> no, I mean 2021. He said, why do they have these people on the national media telling us things that they can't predict? Bob, I think it just goes back to a very, very simple equation. Watching financial propaganda is terrible for your financial health. Just don't do it. You know, Ryan, they're very wise words. And I, I think there was another wise investor that said the same thing. I think his name's Warren Buffett, and he's the smartest and most successful investor of all time. Yeah. So if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need a plan based on my goals, not on the financial propaganda that's coming out every single day that you need to avoid at all costs. Here's your shot to do it. We still have a couple slots left. If you give us a call right now and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, myself and Bob will run for you our total financial master plan. And we're going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review. When we look at everything. All you need to do is the end of the month's here, wait for those statements to come in or just print them off the computer, put them in a folder, put them in a bag, bring them in the office. We're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal where we're going to look at everything on a computer screen, give you a bird's eye view and look at all the critical components to your portfolio. We're going to look at everything from fees. Yes, I know it's shocking, but there's a lot of hidden costs in investment portfolios and products. We're going to show you in those annuities, mutual funds, brokerage products, where all the hidden costs are, show you how to reduce them so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. We're going to look at income. Income is so critical in retirement. What is your income gap going to be? How are you going to replace your income if you're going to retire or if you're retired now? We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio in the most tax-efficient manner. And we're going to look at diversification. Did your portfolio get hit really hard at the end of the year when the market went down? Are you protected? We're going to show you how to bulletproof or safeguard your portfolio for retirement. And finally, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine that very critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies our families worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success? Real simple. All you have to do is call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of our next few callers, you've saved over 200000 for your retirement. Ryan and I will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost. There won't be a plan unless you pick up the phone or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob. I'm with my son, Ryan. And we're the pains. No pain, no gain. Financial Radio. Hi, it's Ryan and Bob here, and we want to talk to you about your cash. Bob, many of us are sitting on a lot of cash right now in our businesses and personal savings accounts, and rest assured the banks are taking full advantage of our dormant cash. That's right, Ryan. Not only do you have to worry about FDIC insurance limits, but most savings accounts pay close to 0%. Exactly right, and that's why we're putting together short-term CD ladders so you can have increased FDIC coverage, and not to mention rates that are in many cases double what your local savings and local checking accounts are paying. If you want to learn more about how to manage your cash better, simply text the word CASH, that's C-A-S-H, CASH, to 844-752-6692. That's text the word CASH, C-A-S-H, to 844-752-6692. This is No Pain, No Gain. Now, back to the show. It's No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I want to educate you, make sure that you have the most common sense, practical advice for your planning and investing. And that's why we put together our latest guide, highlights from the new tax law, just to get you up speed with the tax reform. Taxes are around the corner. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish, to 555-888. Highlights from the new tax law, just to get you up to speed with the new tax reform. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, to 555-888. That's the word bullish, to 555-888. And if you want to learn more about me and Bob, 
You can check us out on the World Wide Web. Simply go to bebullish.com. That's bebullish.com. We put up all our shows there. You can subscribe to the show. We have a lot of our market commentary there. And if you want to see if Bob's hair is real or not, it is real, but find out for yourself. Go to bebullish.com. You can check it out at bebullish.com. Learn a little more about pain capital management. And you can catch most of our advisors on television every week on Fox Business News, CNBC, Yahoo Finance, talking about our latest views on the market and the economy. And if you ever question you want to ask myself or Bob, you can email us, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at at bebullish.com. If it's a really good question, Bob and I answer it right here on the show. And to help us with our questions today, we have our producer in studio, Mr. Mark Haywood. Which happened to Mark? How you doing today, man? I'm going to be honest, gentlemen. It was all I could do to get off the couch to come in and do this show. When really, <laughs> I just want to get my setup ready and just watch basketball all weekend long. So they well, call it March Madness. It makes people mad. <laughs> <laughs> Productivity is definitely down the last couple of days, but we do have to answer questions from the mailbag. We have to give the people what they want out Let's there. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's take a question from Harold in Livingston, New Jersey. He says, Bob, I'm almost 60 and don't have any money in Roth IRAs. Should I be converting some IRA money to Roth for the next few years? You know, Harold, that's a great question. And it's kind of surprised you don't have any money in Roth because the Roth IRA is now 22 years old. That's right. Back in 1997, Senator William Roth of Delaware, that's where the name Roth came from, in the Tax Reform Act, came up with the Roth IRA. And it's one of the greatest innovations in the history of investing. Now, number one, you're able to grow your money tax-free forever. There's never a time we have to pay tax. There's no required minimum distribution like you have on your retirement accounts where the government forces you to take money and pay tax. Even they forced you to take money out of this, you wouldn't pay any tax because it's tax-free. Greatest innovation in the history of our industry. Now, you're almost 60. Should you convert some of your retirement money into a Roth IRA? Well, that depends on a lot of issues. And that's why you need to sit down with an advisor to decide because when you do make that conversion, you have to pay more taxes. You know, Rye, last year, you advised me to make a conversion to my Roth in the last couple of years, and it made a lot of sense. How do you determine whether it's a good idea or a bad idea to convert to a Roth? Yeah, no, that, that's a really, really good question. And the big thing is, and this is why you need to talk to your tax advisor and your financial advisor, but it just it depends on what tax rate you're in. Because when you convert money, you have to pay taxes on it. Now, the good news is 90% of us, based on the statistics, had some sort of tax break from the new tax reform last year. So when you're doing your taxes this year, you really want to find out, are you in a lower tax bracket than last year or the same, probably not higher? And that could be a big determiner. And you have all the way till the end of the year to do a Roth conversion. But I think it's something you all should be looking at, especially now if you're getting close to retirement, maybe you retired recently and your income is lighter than it used to be. Looking at a Roth conversion can be a huge advantage for your retirement. And Bob, I'll tell you how crazy it is. I ran projections for a client recently, and mm -hmm. we ran that if he got a 6% return on his money, and we did that without tax efficiency, we didn't do Roth conversions, we didn't create any sort of tax-free income for him, he didn't make it in retirement. We ran the same numbers and got him a 5.5% return, but we did everything we could to maximize his taxes, and he was able to retire. So you really need, the point is not only just Roth conversions, but you need to look at how can you manage your money from the most tax efficient perspective you possibly can. Well, it sounds like it uh, makes a lot more sense to have you as a financial friend than the US government. The US government just yeah. takes your return and reduces it where you protect them from the government and increase their return. You know, everyone should have this analysis done right, everyone. Well, thanks for writing in, Harold. Let's take a question now from Donald in Port Jefferson, Long Island. He says, Ryan, I'm not retiring for a few years, but I'll be 62 next month so I can start my Social Security. Donald, you can also get in on that Wendy's Senior Citizen Special, I should also point <laughs> out. Congratulations. He also says, um, should I go ahead and start it, start that Social Security, and use the extra income to get my house paid off sooner? Uh, that's a good question. So, you know, one of the things you, you want to do, and the thing about Social Security is there's so many different ways that you can take it. And depending on taxes, depending on longevity, depending on how old your spouse is, whatever you're going to do in regards to Social Security is going to be different than somebody else. 
So, Bob, I think the first thing here for Donald and everybody is you need to make your decision about Social Security in context of your entire wealth plan. You really do, right? You can't do this in a vacuum. You have to take your spousal benefit into consideration. Maybe your spouse uh, was a non-working spouse who's entitled to Social Security, like your mom. When I start taking my Social Security, she can take half of what I'm taking. So that you know may help me to decide whether I should take it at 66 or 70, but it's a matter of running the projections, running the numbers for your personal plan, and then it becomes very simple to make that decision. You know, yeah. it's not just taking the money, right? It's like, what are you going to do with the money? If you're spending it, it's one thing, but what if you're reinvesting it? You know, the sooner sometimes you take it, the more money you'll ultimately make. Now, that's a great point, but in, in, in here in Donald's case, talking about everyone's different, well, if he's still working, Donald, I don't know how much you're making, but if you make over somewhere around 15000 a year, you actually get penalized to take your Social Security early at 62. Yep. In his case, it may not make sense. That's why you really need to have a full Social Security analysis run and have it in context of all your other investments. Perfect place you for you. Know, what I find with the Social Security office is that they do a great job of helping people and giving out information. But if you don't know what the correct and right questions are to ask, then you're going to miss the boat. You really need some clear financial professional advice. And that's always a good idea to have someone helping you with making the choice of when you take your Social Security payment. So, Rye, let me ask you a question. Ask. Harold and Donald, on a scale of 1 to 10, how financially organized do they sound to you? Oof. I'll tell you what, they got a long way to go, but a lot of progress can be made. So I'm going to give them a three and a half today because, Bob, we know I'm a benevolent man. Well, I'll tell you what, three and a half is a lot higher than a lot of people I've seen lately. So let me ask all of you a question. On a scale of one to 10, how financially organized are you right now? Where would you rate your financial organization? Well, I think we'd all want to be a 10. And if you want to be a 10, all you have to simply do is be one of our next few callers. Because if you've saved over 200000 for retirement, Ryan and I are going to create for you your own 360 financial portal. This is a full holistic view of everything you own, updated in real time. And more importantly, it's there whenever you feel like dropping in to look at it. It's also going to display all of your goals, your goals of retirement, your lifetime income goals, your educational goals for your grandchildren, any specific financial goal you have in your life will be listed on your homepage. And not only will it show you what your goals are, this will show you how you're progressing towards those goals. All you have to do is gather all your statements, pick up the phone and set an appointment or text us. Put all those statements in a, in a shopping bag or in a, in a folder. You don't even have to open them. We're going to sit down with you. We're going to break down your portfolio to the three key elements of a successful strategy. We're going to be sure that you're diversified. We're going to be certain that you're not being overcharged by your own portfolio. I don't know about you. I don't like being overcharged. And lastly, we're going to look at your income. We're going to look at the income and the cash flow that your portfolio generates on an annual basis to make sure you have a repeatable, dependable income stream to fill that income gap that we all need in retirement. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together for you with your own total financial master plan, where we're going to answer that age-old question, are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that My family's been perfecting now for over 40 years. That's right. For four decades, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, to your goals, to your dreams, with your values, with the highest odds of success, and only the certainty that a fiduciary like paying capital management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. 6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion. Make sure you're on track at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. We still have a couple slots left. If you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, call or text now at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is no pain. No Gain Financial Radio. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I, we try to give you practical advice, things you can apply to your planning and investing. That's why we put together our latest guide, highlights from the new tax law, just to make sure you're up to speed with the new tax reform. Taxes around the corner. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH. 
That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word, bullish, to 555-888. Highlights from the new tax law just to get you up to speed with the new tax reform. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And now we have a very special guest on the show, my colleague, Bob's colleague, financial advisor at Payne Capital Management, Mr. Aaron Dessen. Aaron, what's shaking, man? Thanks for being on the show this morning. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Good morning. It's always great to be here. And Aaron, you know, this is our spotlight segment. This is where we actually dissect a real financial plan and we uncover the flaws or what we call quote unquote pain points so our listeners can avoid the same mistakes with their own planning and investing. And I know you worked on a case recently, so I thought you could walk us through it and just give us the rundown on how you help this couple get on their path to what we would call financial freedom. Sure. So I met with a couple in their mid 50s. Um, they're thinking about you know retiring in the next 10 years or so. And they really wanted to get a sense of what kind of fees and expenses they were paying with their investments. You know, they really weren't sure what kind of hidden costs there were. And the one thing we find is that the beauty of our industry, not the beauty of our industry, is it's usually <laughs> the devil you don't see is a lot more dangerous than the devil you do see because a lot of times the fees are hidden, embedded inside the actual funds and things that, uh, that we own. Yeah, that's exactly right, Ryan. Um, what we had to do was, you know, really dig through all the investments to to seek out all the fees and expenses they were paying. Um, but that really wasn't the biggest issue with this portfolio. It was really the level of risk that they're taking. So, Aaron, were they aware that they were taking a lot of risk? That they were heavily weighted in the stock market? They weren't aware to the extent of the risk that they're taking. You know, they like equities, they like growth, um, but they had no idea that over three quarters of their portfolio was in in equities. Yeah, but I think the thing is, when you when you look at a portfolio like this, they appear to be diversified because they have a lot of different names. You know, Fidelity this, Vanguard that, you know, TCW this. These are all different companies and different funds, different mutual funds, but they all own the same stock. So they, they kept buying the same portfolio over and over again. Uh, they have what we call overlap. Were they aware that they had so much concentrated in, in just a few companies? No, they weren't. And, and one of the things that really shocked them, so for example, they had 83% of their investments in equities. Of mm -hmm. that 83%, 41, almost half, was in large cap U.S. stocks. Yeah, and that's the beauty of this analysis. It's just the way, Aaron, I love the way you just map it out, right? You're able to show at a bird's eye view all the different accounts and you can see exactly where the money's concentrated because when you have a lot of different investment portfolios, you don't really know if everything's working together, you own the same thing, but what ends up happening a lot is you end up owning the same stuff everywhere, so you're not really diversified. Yeah, and that's something that we see all the time. This entire portfolio was spread out ag across 10 different accounts, You know, whether it's a former 401k that they rolled into an IRA or an IRA they opened with another company, and everything just sort of gets gets jumbled that way. And it's really hard to consolidate and see exactly what you're invested in across the board. And it makes more sense now that you see they have all these different investments, but they have they think they're diversified by having 10 accounts, but they have the same investment in each account. It's kind of like this executive I used to work with from Sperry Rand when I first took over his account. Do you remember Sperry Rand, right? I have no idea who Sperry Rand is. I was like, that sounds <laughs> was, like the name of- This is a of, huge uh, computer company that was in Bluebell, PA. It had an executive who you know, had all of his money in Sperry Rand stock. And then he had the stock options came from Sperry Rand. His 401k was invested 100% in Sperry Rand. So he didn't see any risk in having all his eggs in one basket. Thank goodness he did this type of analysis like Aaron did for his client because Sperry went out of business. Sperry Rand sounds like some guy that owns a yacht, but that's, a, <laughs> that's another <laughs> story altogether. So Aaron, what else did you find? So look like they in their early 50s, taking way more risks than they should be way more money in the markets and just concentrated risk. What were some of the other things that you found when you ran the analysis? Well, so actually one of the, the other reasons that they called into the radio is because they're a long time listener to the radio and they always hear us talk about you know fees and expenses and what we see looking at so many portfolios and how we can normally save clients money. So they really wanted to see what kind of cost they could save and what kind of income could be generated. I mean, it turns out by taking a massive amount of risk off the table, we're almost doubling wow. their income along with taking this tremendous amount of risk off the table. Yeah, I'm looking at this right now. You did that on our, our investment analysis sheet. You brought their income from 30 grand up to 60 grand a year. You doubled their income. And again, that comes in every year, no matter if the market goes up or down. That's pretty sweet. 
Yeah, couldn't have said it better myself. I mean, one of their biggest concerns was preservation of capital. So not only are we doing that, but like you said, we're doubling their income every year just for being in. Yeah. yeah and I mean, thing, you know what? And even even before you're retired, when you have that kind of cash flow coming in, it allows you to redeploy that cash flow in your portfolio and to reinvest into undervalued asset classes uh, to take advantage of this volatility. When you have everything in the same portfolio, you know, you live or die by the sword, right? If it goes up, you do well. When it goes down, you lose everything. It's just uh, just makes so it's so much more common sense to have a diversified portfolio with cash flow. So, Aaron, so between reducing the risk on the portfolio, diversifying better, and then doubling their income on their portfolio, I got to think between that and your your deep booming voice, which just commands uh, attention, how could they not work with you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a no brainer. <laughs> well, well done, as Bob likes to say, another financial masterpiece. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, this is what I need to know. I need to know about the risk I'm taking in my portfolio. Am I protected for retirement? What kind of fees I'm paying? Am I getting the income I need on my portfolio for retirement? Here's your shot to do it. We still have a couple slots left. If you're one of the next few callers and you call right now, myself, Bob, Aaron Desson will run for you our total financial master plan. And we're going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review where we look at the whole picture just like this. Just bring those statements in. They're probably going to be coming in very soon for March. Or just print them off the computer, put them in a folder, bring them in the office. What we're going to do is we're going to build you your own personalized financial portal where we can get a bird's eye view of everything. And we're going to run everything on the same Excel spreadsheet. We're going to look at all those different things like fees. There's a lot of hidden costs in those investment portfolios. This couple had no idea what they were paying. Find out what you're really paying on your portfolio, and we'll show you where we can possibly reduce cost so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. We're going to look at income. We're able to double this couple's income for retirement. That's tremendous. We know from $30,000 to $60,000 a year has nothing to do with the market going up or down. How can we optimize or increase the income on your portfolio to fill in your income gap? And we're going to look at diversification. Do you have a lot of different accounts everywhere that are all doing the same thing? Are you properly protected? Did you get hit really hard when the market took a hit back in December? We're going to show you how to bulletproof and protect your portfolio for retirement. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine that really critical question, the most critical question, are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies now we've been working on for over four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success? Hey, we have one or two spots left. You don't want to miss out. All you want to do is call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you are one of the next few callers, you've saved over 200000 for your retirement we will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost, but there won't be a plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Well, another great show, gentlemen. Aaron, it's an honor, pleasure to have you on the show. Always always good when you're here because your voice is even more powerful than Bob and I's voice. Hey, I have to keep you guys on the radio. <laughs> we appreciate that. <laughs> Bob, what's on tap for the rest of the weekend? March Madness? Chilling in the jacuzzi? I don't know, Ryan. I'm just, I'm just hoping that uh, spring showers do actually bring May flowers. Ah, we hope. We hope. We're so close. Well, another great show. And as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.